Hi, it's Phil here. Welcome to my channel, Revive My Ride. Revive My Ride is all about how to maintain and repair your own cars as a DIYer. This video is about how to change the oil and filter in the Mercedes 7G Tronic automatic gearbox. Okay, so enough talk, time to get on with the job. The first thing you're going to do is get the car jacked up and onto axle stems or using a lift like you can see here. But for this job it's really important that the car is level. When you're using a lift like this one then you can just place the spirit level onto one of the beams of the lift. If you're using axle stems and it's not level, all you have to do is literally place something underneath the axle stand like a thin piece of wood or uh, depending on how much it's out, jack it up to the next notch. Uh, so your axle stand you move up to the next tire position uh, But the key thing is that you get it roughly level uh, and that will make sure that when you drain you get all the fluid out And when you refill uh, then you know it, it makes it easier to get that accurate Okay with that done time to get under the car and start the job. I hope you're digging the little chair So this is your gearbox here uh, this is the, uh, the bottom of the sump which we're going to remove, uh, there's filters behind there, uh, your sump plugs here so uh, obviously the first thing we're going to do is drain that um, and then we'll uh, move on from there. Okay so I'm just going to remove the uh, sump plug using an 8mm Allen key. Um, what I've got here is just a normal bucket but it does have increments inside it for how much uh, volume. Um, so when I'm doing this job I like to measure to see how much oil comes out. Um, that way I can see if the car is losing any. Um, also if you're not experiencing uh, running issues with your uh, gearbox then presumably it's got the right level in. So I use it as a sense check that um, what comes out I put a similar amount back in again. Not the end of the world if you drop the um, sump plug into the bottom of the bucket, but I try to avoid it if I can. There we go. And while that's doing that, you can um, go ahead and get your tools out ready for removing the uh, the sump at the bottom. So these are uh, torx bits. Oh, rudely interrupted. So these are uh, torx screws. So you'll need a uh, torx socket in order to uh, to take them off. Okay, so I've got the uh, torque, so uh, torque socket ready to use. Uh, this one uh, says it's an E11. Just while I'm waiting for that to drain, I'm going to start uh, cracking these loose. And what I normally do is I just um, go around and loose them a little bit at first. So like half a turn each. They're actually not very tight, so they're probably quite low torque. And we'll talk about torque ratings when I put it back together again. Um, that bracket will actually get in the way when you try to drop this sump. So uh, it's just held on at the uh, top by a screw, which is um, a Torx 30 uh, screw. So I'm just going to drop that down out of the way, and then I'm, when I'm ready to take the pan out, then it won't obstruct it. And that's important because there'll be oil in this pan still. And uh, so you want to lower it down carefully and then have your bucket on hand uh, ready to pour the oil into it, otherwise you could end up with a mess. So that's the bracket there. Um, it just holds a, a cable at the top. don't know if you can see it. Um, but anyway, you can just move that off to one side now. Just wedge it behind something. You'll notice that the bolt has a little clip on it, um, and um, and so that's what's holding the pan up against the um, the bottom of the gearbox. Okay, so there's just two holding it on now. Okay, so just the one left. I'm going to try and keep this back edge high and then the front edge can come lower if it needs to.
So just tilting it down at the left hand corner to uh, get the oil into the bucket. So it just slides forward does the pan because at the back there's a bracket and it just goes under the edge of it. So you just slide it forward and tilt it down. And I'm just letting uh, the filter drain down a little bit. So I'm just going to pour what's left uh, from this um, pan into the, uh, into the bucket. Okay, so that filter's almost finished draining now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can pry the filter down. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's in the bucket with the oil now. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, it just pops down. Just a couple of things to comment on. So uh, the reason why the pan doesn't completely drain when you take the plug out is it has uh, this filler nozzle. Uh, I tend to call these a snorkel, but that's not their technical name. So obviously once you've taken the plug out, uh, then the level stays uh, above that. So that's why there was some uh, left over. Five litre mark. Okay, so I've got my new filter here. Um, this is a, a genuine Mercedes one and uh, it's just a push fit uh, in. So probably I'll just put a little bit of this oil just on the uh, O-ring, you know, just to make it push on a little bit easier. And then uh, we'll give it a go and see what happens. Yep, pretty easy. So um, there's a couple of magnets that sit in the bottom of the pan and that's to collect any uh, metal shavings that are um, coming out of the gearbox from wear and tear. So uh, yeah, I don't think you need to see me cleaning up a, uh, uh, a pan, so I'm just going to uh, get some clean rags and give it a good wipe. Um, once I've got this seal out, make sure I've cleaned all around the edges, make sure the magnets are clean. Just for amusement value, I thought I'd let you see me trying to uh, put this on. Because so many times you see these videos and people are like, oh yeah, it's a doddle. And then you don't know how much they've struggled or haven't struggled to try to get it to fit. So uh, yeah, I'll have a little go. Let you guys have some fun at my expense if it doesn't go on. Uh, there's like a little um, part of the pan there and then a, a little rubber tab that goes into it. Get that in. Yep, 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 it's there. Some kind of like aptitude test. Okay, stop the clock. I think it's there. So the edge of the pan that I was saying you need to tilt up and back, it actually goes uh, above this bracket. So what I've actually decided to do is drop this bracket down uh, until the pan's in position and then refit the bracket afterwards. So this bracket here, it's, it's no real big deal because it looks like it's just an exhaust bracket. Uh, the one that's actually uh, supporting the gearbox is this back one and I don't intend to touch that one. So there's a couple of 13mm um, uh, bolts there and then there's a couple of nuts on this side and that should come out quite quickly. Okay, so in the end I've just loosened that because I found that by loosening it, it gave me the clearance in this area that I wanted. So now instead of having to tilt it and slide it in place, I'm just lifting it straight up. So I'd say that's a much better solution with that bracket down out of the way. And then just quickly get the bolts back on. Obviously they have a, uh, they have a little plastic formed piece that grabs around the, ed the edge of the uh, the pan. Okay, so that's just two holding it and then that gives me an opportunity to get the others ready and in position. So, uh, last bolt that holds the um, pan up and if you remember there's like a special um, aluminium block that goes onto this one 
and it's because it holds that bracket so uh, obviously making sure we put this back into that front right corner which is the correct position for it and then this bracket um, just slides over it and then you'll have another little smaller bolt that you took off earlier uh, that secures that bracket in place there we go it's a little torque screw so uh, little quarter drive ratchet set and the correct bit for the torques So you can see this bracket's all nice and tidy up against the side of the gearbox now. So it's possible to go all round the pan now and then just checking that this seals in place as it should be uh, because you've nipped all these up finger tight so this is your opportunity. So obviously behind this bracket before you fitted it you would have checked the seal and then you know go round and even this back edge uh, here you can check and you can see that the seal's in place. And this exhaust bracket that I moved out of the way earlier, uh, obviously it allows me to see the seal at the back and I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bolt that back into the position now. Okay, so I've got my mini torque wrench uh, set to eight Newton meters. Uh, but what I'm gonna do initially is just uh, started with the middle two. So first this one, then across. And I'm not going to tighten them fully up to that 8 uh, Newton meters. I'm just going to kind of tighten them up a little bit. That's just like a quarter of a turn. They're already just finger tight to start with. Okay, so that's a quarter of a turn on those. And then I'll go around again. But it's always good practice. You do the middle ones and then you uh, do a cross. And, um, and you're better tightening up in stages, really, rather than tightening one of them up to the full torque and then moving to the next. So I'll just go around them all again. Obviously, some of them haven't clicked yet. That one has. That one has. And that's it. Okay, so one thing that might be putting you off doing this job yourself is um, filling the gearbox back up on this type of car. Uh, this 7G Tronic gearbox, um, you have to fill from the bottom through the sump plug. Um, and often if you read up about it online, you'll see people using uh, dedicated equipment which has a built-in pump and all the rest. Uh, but actually you don't need uh, all that if you're doing it as a DIY and if you're not going to be doing it frequently you can afford to take a little bit more time. So I've got a few things uh, I'm going to show you and this is how I'm going to do it and obviously you'll see this equipment in action. So you can just buy these quite inexpensively and it's just like a little hand pump really. Um, so you literally just draw in the fluid and then you're ready to inject it into the gearbox then you'll push that. Then the other thing you're going to need is uh, an adapter of some kind to, uh, to fit into the gearbox. And then what I've actually done is I've got a valve. Um, so uh, when I've put in the amount of fluid that the little hand pump can put in, uh, then I'll close the valve before removing this and that way uh, I minimise any spillage I get. Uh, but I'm going to talk you through all of this um, and then hopefully you can put together your own little kit uh, quite inexpensively. Okay, so this is an example of the type of kit that you could put together. Um, it's not exactly the same as what I used, but I've uh, put this together to hopefully help you out because all of these um, parts were readily available from eBay. Item number one, the uh, M12 by 1.5 male threaded hose tail. That's the thread size for your sump plug. So where the sump plug goes, you'll screw that hose tail in. And then I think the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So using um, little lengths of hose and, um, and pipe clamps, and then where it's a threaded uh, joint, like into the uh, ball valve that you can see, applying some PTFE tape to the thread, then you can put, to, uh, put together this kit, and this will allow you to fill up your gearbox. 
and um, I priced this up and um, you could get all of these materials for less than £30. So I've got 8 litres of transmission fluid here, but I'm not going to need it all, unless something's gone horribly wrong. So I'm just going to draw this up with the uh, hand pump. Now it's a little bit of a messy job when you're doing it DIY compared to if uh, you had the pump like the garage has got. So just opening the valve now, I've connected up the hose from the hand pump and then go ahead and inject that fluid in. Shut the valve again and then repeat, reconnecting it up, opening the valve, pushing the fluid in. There we go, five litres in the gearbox. Okay, so when you're setting the level for the final adjustment, you're meant to do it while the um, gearbox oil is hot and the, um, the required temperature of the oil is 45 degrees C. And also, um, if it was at a workshop, they would probably plug in some kind of a scan tool that receives uh, the information directly from the ECU. Now, if you're doing a DIY like me, then probably you don't have that available. So um, what I've seen a lot of people using is this um, infrared thermometer. So literally you just aim it at the bottom of the um, sump and when the temperature reaches 45 uh, then you go ahead and turn off the car at that point and then you do your um, adjustments. So I'm going to do that now. So uh, let's see what it's like before I start the car. Okay so that's about 14 degrees C. So I'm going to go ahead and start the engine now and I'll run it until it gets to 45 degrees C and I'm going to time it as well. So if you ever find yourself in a similar situation but you don't have the measuring tool then potentially you could um, do it to a similar amount of time. Okay as you can tell we're running now and obviously it's going to take a bit more time uh, to get up to temperature uh, just uh, idling like this. So it's only been a few minutes and we're at 18 degrees now. Okay, so it's 37 minutes now, and we're finally up to temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off the engine now. Okay, so just going to drain off any excess fluid. Okay, so that's running now. And then the idea is, once it slows down, to just to trickle. Like that. So it's just petering out. That's when you've got the level to the uh, correct amount. And bear in mind you've got this device to get off and the sump plug to get in and you may well lose just a little bit of fluid um, uh, when you're doing that as well. Okay. That wasn't too bad was it? There is a torque setting for this and I, I normally don't bother I just kind of get it nice and snug. But if I can find the uh, torque setting, I'll put it on. And then if you do have a, um, a small torque wrench, you'll be able to tighten it up to the right amount. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, then please consider subscribing. If you also click notifications, then YouTube will let you know when I bring out more videos. And then hopefully that means you won't miss out. If you do decide to tackle this job yourself, then please drop me a comment or a message. I'd love to hear how you got on. If you have any questions or comments at all, then please go ahead and leave them below and I'll try my best to help when I can.